Lupe Fiasco's latest album, Samurai, is pretty good. I like it. It's been a hit with his fans, and it's been pretty well critically received since it dropped in late June. But one thing that's really thrown, you know, me and many other people for a loop is this idea that the album is about Amy Winehouse being a battle rapper. Thankfully, Lupe Fiasco was quoted in a couple separate interviews this week in which he is expounding upon the concept of this album, almost on a song-by-song basis. In this video, I'm going to be giving you the skinny on these two very long interviews, uh, over 5,000 words combined, to help break down the major overarching themes that are present in this album, according to Lupe himself. And not only that, but he's already teasing the next projects to come. What's up, y'all? I'm Devon here again for Obligatory, showing up for you weekly every Friday with a music news recap. Today is July 12th, 2024. We've got a few stories to get to, but I really want y'all to stick around for the end of this video where we do the new releases and upcoming albums because there were like at least 10 new upcoming albums announced this week, many of which I'm pretty excited about. So it's been known for quite some time at this point that Lupe has been working on what he calls a lyrical portraiture of Amy Winehouse. Now, he first mentioned this all the way back in 2020 in an interview uh, in which he also mentions doing very similar projects with painters like Basquiat or Mark Rothko or fellow rapper Royce the Five Nine. Now I'm working on something with Amy Winehouse, you know, in the same capacity, a little bit bigger project. So all that to set up that about 2012, I was like, you know who needs this? Basquiat. All of these ideas varying in length from like one verse to a song to several songs to a whole album. Through this, people following Lupe's work closely have long been familiar with the fact that this entire album was sparked by one quote from Amy in a voicemail that she left her producer, Salam Remy. Um, hello, Salami. Um, Salami, I keep calling out with all rattle raps and it's pouring out of me that Wu Tang stuff, like, but really neat, very beautifully alliterated little battle raps. So next time you want to come for me and have a battle rap off, I'm going to kill you because. Lupe says that this entire album was born from the seed that was the soundbite. From there, it inspired a series of questions like, well, what would that look like? How would she rap? And what would it take to build her, this extremely talented and gifted artist, into a totally different realm of artistry? All of that, Lupe put into one song that would eventually become the lead single, the album's opener, Samurai. That one song blossomed into the eight-track album that we have today as Lupe continued to ask himself more and more questions about how this fantasy would go, thus creating a storyline that covers the origins, triumphs, tribulations, and revelations that loosely make for a beginning, middle, and end inside of this album. After the song Samurai, we get Mumble Rap, a more linear tale of how Amy gets her battle rap powers. So if Samurai is establishing the character mumble rap is really establishing the story we have and projecting it forward i like that on this song lupe scats the chorus which of course is where we get the song title from but it's also one of the many very nice nods to jazz and jazz vocalists throughout this album and in mumble rap our protagonist experiences her first battle and so again this song is meant to establish the plot of the story moving forward into the next song Okay, here's Lupe again explaining the concept of the album in a bit greater detail, uh, specifically around the song Cake and what that song represents as a moment in our story here. So this is this is this is after her first battle. Uh, This one, she said it take the cake. So that's the the concept behind it. So she's just like going through like the aftermath of the battle and shit. But each 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 scene in the in the story has its own song. And at this point, you can see with this song, our version of Amy is hitting her stride as a battle rapper, taking people out, and really realizing the magnitude of her potential. The song number one headband, of course, is a direct reference to the anime Afro Samurai, uh, in which the protagonist dons the number one headband to denote that he is the top samurai in all of Japan. And if you want it, you're going to have to come take it off his head, right? If you want to be the baddest, you got to beat the baddest. And so at this point in Amy's story, she has reached that mantle of becoming the best having beat the best of the best. And so this song feels to ruminate on the success of summiting after the long and arduous journey. Then we have the album's closer, Till Eternity, that really puts a bow on everything we just heard, reflecting on the long-held legacy of someone who's reached the pinnacle of their specialty. At which point, our story can just fade into legend. Songs like Palaces, Bigfoot, and Outside are more loosely tied to the overarching concept, and Per Lupe contain a little bit more of the perspective or experience of Lupe himself. 
And so there's kind of this element of Amy's story being reflective of that of Lupe or really anyone else. You know, one thing that's very clear when Lupe speaks is that Samurai is not meant to rewrite or postscript the history and legacy of the literal Amy Winehouse. This is fan fiction. It is whimsical. It's multiverse. It's a tribute to someone from someone who really studied and enjoyed their art and their writing. And in a way, as we've said, Amy's story is one that is a bit extreme, but it's also extremely symbolic of the struggle that many musicians and many artists go through. And so when I think about it in that sense, you know, this very random concept for an album, this big what if, all of a sudden seems a lot more clever and, and really does contain the kind of tale that really reflects the experiences of so much of the history of music. So that's mostly what I wanted to cover here with Lupe explaining the concept of Samurai. If you want to read more about all this and both of these recent interviews, we have them both linked down in the description of this video. Lupe also confirmed both in these interviews and recently on Twitter that he is working on the next project and new music. And something I'm noticing in reading these interviews, by the way, is that Lupe works very like out of chronology with these albums. So Samurai was made before Drill Music and Zion, which came out a couple years ago. And whatever's next for him, he could have already been working on or it may not come out for several years. From there, I wanted to move on to Childish Gambino because we talked a bit about Childish Gambino last week as we are now just one week away from Bando Stone and the New World, the next and potentially final album by Donald under the Childish Gambino name. Like we mentioned, uh, Donald did have a performance set up for this week in which he was going to uh, play and perform like most of the album. As we mentioned in that last video, Donald did have a concert this week in which he performed, I think, the entirety of the album. He played 15 songs, all presumably from the album, but not in the order of the proposed track list. And we learned a lot about how this thing sounds and what Donald is really going for here. We know this is gonna host a variety of sounds. This might be one of his most like versatile or expansive or ambitious albums in terms of different genres from song to song. And it seems like we can expect collabs from Steve Lacey, Flo Millie, Fouché, Georgia Smith, Amare, and maybe potentially more. So I would say look into that if you can't wait to hear this thing. There's tons of coverage around it. You can see videos from him performing and their collabs and everything. Now, before I move into upcoming albums, I have a couple albums announced this week that don't have dates, so they're not going to go into my spreadsheet here, but Fouché announced her new album, Pointy Heights, is coming sometime in August. And then Amir Van, formerly of Brockhampton, announces that his first independent album is going to be dropping here very soon as well, probably in August. Pretty touch and go for Amir Van really ever since he left Brockhampton, so we'll see what this full-fledged debut independent release is going to amount to. Moving on to notable new releases and editor's picks from this week of new releases. Personally, I had to start my day off by listening to the new Common album, listening to the new Action Bronson album, but I also wanted to point y'all's attention to the new EP from the band Water From Your Eyes. This is MP3 Player One and sees the band covering everything from Adele, Third Eye Blind, to Al Green, and Chumbawamba, it's four song EP. It's pretty awesome. I would say that's like my personal recommendation to y'all. If you haven't yet, please check it out. Singles this week, also pretty good. There are a ton. Albums announced this week, though. This this is what I really wanted to show y'all. There's a lot that got announced this week. From Logic's new album, Ultra 85, to a new Moses Sumney EP, to the next in highly awaited Magdalena Bay album. Uh, the shoegaze band Julie is announcing their debut album, Floating Points and Ty Siegel. Albums the rest of July, it's going to be pretty dope. Next Albums the rest of July, going to be pretty dope. Next week, we got Denzel Curry and Childish Gambino. The week after that, Porter Robinson, Crack Cloud, Rock Him, Ice Spice, why not? Albums releasing in August, the first week so far for me, a little quiet, but then we get Raven Lene, Mavi, OC's, King Giz. Rest of the year, we're looking at Toro y Moi, MJ Lenderman, Nila for Yanya, Jamie XX, and quite a bit more. So there is a lot to look forward to. There's a lot to keep us busy for the rest of the summer and really throughout the rest of the year. And uh, Lord knows I have a lot of music to catch up on that already came out that I haven't heard yet. So feel free to suggest me some music. Let me know what you've been listening to recently, uh, what you were maybe most excited for in what was a pretty stacked music album week this week. And uh, what are you most excited for off of this list of album announcements? Any of those things, you let me know down in the comment section. I'll be down there chatting with y'all. And while you're at it, clicking the like button on this video does genuinely help our channel so if you do that i love you i'll be back next week doing it all over again here with y'all so i will see y'all then thanks again for watching and peace out